Welcome to What If Season 1, Episode 7, Thoughts. What if Thor were an only child? So, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend viewers talk about Easter eggs and such on the show, reacting to it, reviewing episodes, special videos made by New Rockstar Screen Rant, Nerdist, CBR Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, IGN, Heavy Spoilers, Magic, Maggie, and Emergency Awesome. So if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. They're all in the 7 to 10 to 10 out of 10 range, although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2. And I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America, the Winter, Captain America, and the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, and the episodes of this show that have aired. And yes, that includes this episode as well. And we again have an episode without, you know, slow pacing killing segments. You know, I don't know, maybe that is easier to do with animation. Maybe when you're animating something, you don't want to anim you don't want to spend forever animating a really slow episode. So that kind of yeah, to to be fair, I'm I most of the animation I've seen have moved, has moved fairly fast, so maybe that's just a thing. I don't know, I, th I think there are slow-paced animated. Anyway, I'm not sure there are any broad performances in this episode. There, are, there is broad comedy, but not in the voice performances. This is not a dark episode other than the ending. You know, that surprising, but then I did hear that apparently this was supposed to air earlier in the schedule, because... This and the first episode are the only so far that where it's really only the ending that's kind of, a, and really, yeah, the first episode doesn't even have that dark of an ending. It's just, you know, I mean, the moment that we knew that it was going to be Captain America 1, but with Peggy instead of Steve getting the serum, I mean, we weren't hugely surprised when it ended basically the same way, you know, pres she's in present day meeting Nick Fury and realizing that she's not going to get to go back to Steve. But yeah, quite good acting performances in this episode, and I think the episode lives up to its potential based on the concept it explores, and it has great character moments for most of its, I guess, pretty much all of its characters. And every character behaves in character, so... And it, it fares pretty decently on diversity. Several women in very important roles. And, yeah, you know, again, every episode other than the first one ends with a bad guy winning. And, I mean, this in this one, actually, to be fair... This is not the first episode where it's only the, the very, very ending that makes it look like a bad guy will win. That was also true of episode two. But, yeah, that's I, I think these are the only three episodes that have had a fairly positive, end, you know, an ending where the bad guy didn't win. It wasn't just the, the tease at the very end. You know, this has the, the Ultrons and episode two has Ego getting in touch with Peter, and yeah, all the other, I don't know if you want to count episode three, where Loki conquers Earth, you know, we thought that the thing that was going wrong was that, I, I mean, technically, almost all the Avengers did get, all the, almost all of the original Avengers did get killed, Hank didn't get to, to Steve, who wasn't thought until the end of the episode, and then there's, of course, Captain Marvel, Anyway, so let's see, yeah, <laughs> I believe we are looking at an alien invasion, hello? I mean, fair enough, how would you react if you got that call, you know? And I do really like, you know, one of the people, <laughs> you know, she called all these different numbers, she ends up, what was it, the park, so something or other, anyway, one of the numbers she calls is S.H.I.E.L.D., and... S.H.I.E.L.D. does end up responding. They just didn't right away. You know, at first they didn't believe her. But then, you know, I mean, they got instruments too. They were they were looking into it and they're like, okay, I guess she's not crazy. And we get Party Thor. 
the choir is diegetic. Good detail. And that's, you know, that's a reference to Thor Ragnarok, as others have pointed out. And, you know, Thor gives, I want to say, Scourge. I didn't write down all of the cameos, but I think it's Scourge that he gives the, the horn to, and he says, it never runs out. And, you know, some of these great people were like, oh, you know, that's a reference to the bit in Thor Ragnarok, where Doctor Strange hands him up. And then some of the more hardcore nerds were like, oh, that's from the Norse myths. And, yeah, I, you know, that's that's in the... If you're ever in the mood for, like, OG, more accurate myth, Nor Norse myth adaptation, you know, there is an animated movie from 1986 and a live-action movie from, I want to say, 2019. Both of them are called Valhalla. And, yeah, they're both Danish productions, but the... the I actually don't know for sure if the live-action one has a dub, I saw an English trailer where it was just subtitled, but, I mean, I can imagine. It, it wouldn't be difficult to do a dub. It, it, you know, it's basically a money issue. Do they want to pump that money into it? Do they think they're going to make that money back? You know, anyway, the, the cartoon one does have a dub, and I have not listened to it because I'm Danish. It's our myths. We animated... Okay, not all of the animators were Danish. And it was apparently, like, the, the lip synchronization was made for the English dub. That's just... Come on, have some pride. It's our myths. Anyway. If you want to watch the... You know, if you if you want to see some of the... Because, yeah. The, the, the never-ending drinking horn does appear. You know what? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it appears in both. Yeah, yeah, it appears in both. In my defense, I've only watched the 2019 one three times, so I don't remember every single thing about it. And the animated one, I don't know, 20 times probably. I've had the VHS tape in forever, so yeah. Not as... You know, when I was like 10, it was like, this is one of the best movies ever made. Now I'm like, okay, they didn't have to play this much to the child audience. But the 2019 one plays more towards a teenage audience. And anyway, they're both great. That was a tangent. Cap Dennings is having a lot of fun playing the, the character. I, I kind of, I guess it's possible that they like have, have video of her. You know, she, she must have had the biggest smile on her face. She's really loving it. And Thor has some fun with the scrolls, and someone pointed out that it's his narcissism that makes you know he loves that they're in person that they have his face. You know he's like ah, oh, this is amazing. You know, Natalie Portman does give a good performance. I I think this might be is this the first voice only role she's done? I'm I'm not one hundred percent certain. Haven't watched everything she's made. Darcy married Howard the Duck, <laughs> and it was it was the it was the Vegas Elvis impersonator who who married them. That's yeah, and and the yeah you know if if the 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 ah what's it called the old Howard the Duck movie featured a scene where. An animal, you know, where, where Howard almost gets, you know, intimate with a human woman. And, yeah, thanks for reminding us of, of that. That is, yeah. Now, I mean, I mean, that has to be an intentional reference. Like, of all the things that, that like, yeah. I usually don't like party scenes in movies, but this was pretty fun. And Korg knocked out Fury, yelling, what was it? Balls cannon. I mean, he, he almost got it right. It was, it was mostly right. Very cool to see the helicarrier again. The party atmosphere seems to be spreading. Right, this was back when all these people were alive and working for S.H.I.E.L.D. 
I, I quite like, you know, they're like, what was it, the, the bring in the last resort. Oh, last resort, that sounds kind of final, and, you know, it, what is it going to be like, a, a, a nuke? I mean, they do get to that, and then open up the case, and it's the, it's the pager, and Darcy's like, last resort, that's, that's just a pager. My dad has a pager. Oh, what was it she said? It was, crap. I don't think she's a podiatrist, but let's go with that. And he's a podiatrist. Are you call? Are you paging a podiatrist? <laughs> and they call in Captain Marvel. It's not the first time Natalie Portman has given a comedic performance. It's good to see she still got it. And Thor's taking a selfie with Sovereign people in Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Great expectation subversion. We think it's going to be a fight between Thor and Loki, but they're brothers from another mother's, and. You know, and, and the Easter egg people have pointed out this is a reality where, you know, when Odin found the baby, you know, it was smiling, it wasn't crying, and it wasn't tiny and weak. It was a normal frost giant baby, so Loki is as big as he was, as his father was in that first Thor movie, Laufey, and he still got the... the you wear my goat helmet, bro. He still got the the goat helmet, and the the now it's made of ice from the frost stands. That's a really great detail. So you know he he is apparently actually the the prince of the frost giants. And we get the Captain Marvel versus Thor fight that people have been clamoring for, and Mjolnir helps even things out. I, that that is kind of a, a a neat little you know he he throws it and she's like oh, gr great job you just lost your only weapon you know and then it hits her in the back of the head and it's, yeah I I do quite like that you know it it it's Mjolnir you know hits her in the back of the head and she's just like ow you know it, it doesn't like like we've literally seen this thing like crush people on impact and she's just like ah oh, that that was a little annoying don't do that again like. <laughs> like, like it, she reacts to Mjol getting Mjolnir in the back of the head. Like we might react to like, I don't know, a a softly thrown uh, boomerang or something. And you know, Thor does. What is it? he said? Like hammerang or something? Like yeah. Don't knock these over. These are, I don't know what these are. No one does. And the Stonehenge domino joke, a ref, you know, reference to, I don't know what it's called, one of those vacation films. It's not a huge surprise. Once they get close, she really wails on him, and she can, of course, take the lightning. It would take something substantially stronger than that to hurt her. She flies through the vacuum of space without, like, putting on a, a dorky-looking helmet that would protect her from the element, you know... I've heard of people surviving being hit by lightning. I'm not sure it's, it's like super frequent kind of thing, but it can happen. I have never heard of someone surviving being in the vacuum of space for even just seconds. And she like she apparently flew for years. Look, I mean, I mean, I guess yeah. Ultimately, we still don't know exactly how long she spent finding the scrolls, a new home. And, you know, so one of the Easter egg people pointed out, kind of harsh of the scrolls to, like, point at her and call her a party pooper. She helped save their people. She helped find them a new planet. And, yeah. Darcy hears how powerful Captain Marvel is. And the one thing she cares about is the cap. And she got the Top Gun reference. And, you know, Carol Danvers doesn't think that she's writing checks her that her skills can't catch but hill does that's a, a great little like it it goes by fast but you know darcy's like is your ego writing skills your your skills your writing checks your skills can't catch and she's like no and at the same time she says no hill says yes because she's like i sent you after the you know this is when they still think that like Thor is going to end up destroying the planet when, 
you know, he, he says, at least, I, I'm not 100% certain if I believe him or not, but he says, no, no, that other planet was already getting destroyed. We just partied there celebrating that, was it celebrating the destruction? That wasn't said in the episode. That was said by one of the Easter egg people, I forget. Anyway, it is so wild to hear Tom Hiddleston as Loki creep on Jane Foster. But again, he's having fun. He is enjoying himself. 100% like the the when he does the kissy noises like just yeah <laughs> and Jane you know is decides she's realizes she's, she should call Heimdall and then get Frigga back and they even like they call out the cliche when a teenager throws a wild party when the parents come home that's when they you know are forced to to clean up and and stop partying and that whole thing and some of these other people have already pointed out this is a you know in this universe the the ah, Selvig is only ever heard over you know she she like communicates with him but we never see him at a, I'm almost certain we never hear him either and she already knows about shield she already knows the norse myths which in the first thor movie you know selvi grew up with them in sweden but the the yeah in in the you know so so yeah he he finds a, a like a children's book about the norse myths and you know the the what's it called he gets the yeah he he talks to her about the the myths but here she already knows them Surtur gets so drunk he hits on the Statue of Liberty and, like, accidentally burns one of the arms off. And the Frost Giants make frozen beards and, and you know, ah, what are they called again? Horn, yeah, horns on Mount Rushmore. And we get Frigga checking in on Thor. And when they realize they're not gonna fire the nuke, Okay, I guess maybe that was a slightly broad performance. May maybe. Anyway. Yeah. The, the, when he says, we never get to fire the nukes. You know, uh, Brock Rumlow, I want to say. Is, I almost, I all, always, almost call him Rock Brumlow, but I'm almost certain it's Brock Rumlow. That's a really dark joke. That's, holy crap. But, I mean, I guess in this case, they weren't going to, like, kill, you know, a lot of humans, but there's still animals living there. I think I hear my dad calling. Good luck. She would literally rather be with her torturing stepfather than help clean up the party. So, yeah, more dark jokes. And the, the, I mean, they, they even reference in this episode, you know, she, she plays... She rolls dice, and she's like, Mama needs a new eye. So they reference the fact that he is, is you know, replacing parts of her. Yeah. And, and one of the Easter egg people joked that this is why Gamora is the favorite sister. While Nebula's off partying, Gamora's, you know, still hard at work. And Thor does manage to get everyone that hadn't already left to help clean up after the party. And Thor writes the Leaning Tower of Pisa, you know, figuring it must be wrong because of the party. And, you know, probably also a reference to Superman 3. And he did manage to get everything cleaned up. And he claims the party goers are his study group. Even Captain Marvel helps Thor with the cover-up. I guess she's just like, you know, as as long as he's going to be studying from now on, I'll, I'll you know, and freaking out Captain Marvel, which is just awesome. I really, like, that's probably going to be a throwaway. I'm, I, I'm not sure. I mean, how would they really? Wait, is Captain Marvel going to be in the team-up episode? I guess that might help allow them to to really dig a little deeper into that but that really that is just awesome that is so 
So cool. Anyway, and Thor basically did have Frigga convinced, but then he calls Mjolnir back, and it's like, there's stuff written on it, and there's like, like beads, and yeah. They lived happily ever after. Wait, what? Perhaps I spoke too soon. So, so yeah, he is like gradually, you know, we're seeing that sometimes he doesn't see everything. You know, th this is the first episode where he's surprised by it. Usually he's the one saying, oh, you know, looks pretty good, but eh, there's the, you know, then they ran into this complication too bad, you know, but no, this time he actually thought, you know, and, and didn't he say that like, as they say, both on Midgard and Asgard, actually, I might have said Earth, anyway, both on Earth and on Asgard, and Ultron with an army of bots, and all six Infinity Stones, and its vision. Holy crap, I really, really looking forward to it, and, and we've already seen a few, like, teaser, like, little, little bits, cl clips, trailers. Apparently, the, you know, they they are going to be I, I don't know if they are the big threat but they're definitely going to be in that episode the the team up one so yeah so the only characters from the movies that did not return to do their voices on this episode are Captain Marvel Frigga Drax and the Warriors three everyone else actually you know so yeah I think pretty much everyone gave good performances in this. It is kind of sweet that even after Jane calls his mom and ruins the party, Thor does still want to date Jane. Emergency Awesome thinks Thor was telling the truth about the other plan, not being destroyed by the party. I don't know. I, to me, it kind of came off as just... I mean, he says he he says a lot of things in, in the, the... Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't... I think it was just him trying to get get out of trouble or or make it seem less yeah Brie Larson's character being boring and annoying I think is like a joke on how fans reacted to her casting her interviews and her solo movie which yeah I I never really thought it's, it's especially the the stuff about oh she should smile more just you know so someone pointed out yeah because you know, the male heroes on, uh, yeah, they were saying, you know, oh, the, the poster, she's not smiling. And, you know, someone, I think on Twitter, you know, pointed out the male heroes aren't smiling on the vast majority of the MCU movie posters. You know, it's, anyway. And, yeah, some great cameos from Thor 3 and Guardians 2. And Nando V movies pointed out the fight scene between Thor and Captain Marvel was like an anime fight scene, and that that fit because they're the two most anime MCU characters. One hundred percent agreed. I forgot who, but someone else pointed out the reason Thor can wield Mjolnir and Captain Marvel can't is not that he's worthy and that she isn't. In the main MCU, I'm certain she can lift it. It's that it's coded to him and Odin at this point in the timeline. This episode takes place. Before the events of Thor 1, at the start of which Thor could wield Mjolnir, even though Odin places the worthiness spell on it in that movie. You know, he only, yeah, he only does that after casting out Thor. From then on and out, it can only be wielded by those who are deemed to be worthy. And, and you know, Hela can destroy it, but that's because it was also coded to her like how it was coded to Odin. It was fun to see an alternate version of an immature Thor. I mean, it's not like in the first solo movie, his character was unimpeachable. So I know I am way late on this, but I finally watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I'm recording the review right after I'm done with this video. I'm, I'm almost 100% certain that by the time this video is up, so will that one be. So, you know, if you're watching this video right now and you want my review of that, it should already be up. So, spoilers for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Please do not watch this next bit if you haven't already watched that because I don't want to give it away. Catherine Hahn plays one of the villains.
in Spider-Verse, you know, um, Doc Ock, Liv. And between that and WandaVision, she's so good at playing villains in these... Like, I, I think she should appear in every comic book movie franchise as a villain, at, le at least one villain. She's just so good at it. In fact, if you look in the description box, there is a petition that I'd like you to sign and forward. But just seriously, you know, we now have her in two different Marvel prop. Is there a chance she could show up in, like, Venom or something? Because, you know, the, the that's not the same continuity. Yeah, I, although I guess if they're going to, yeah, there's still, like, a chance. They're, they're, it's, certainly, I want to say her name is Amy Pascal, would like for that to, you know, connect to the MCU, for, for Tom Holland's Spider-Man to show up in that. Anyway, no more spoilers for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And yeah, that was everything I had for this episode. Really fun episode. It was, it, it does kind of make me wonder, I guess maybe, like, let's see, there's two episodes left of the season, I want to say. I wonder if at least one of those is also going to be a relatively light one, because apparently this episode, I forget exactly when it was supposed to originally come out, but it was supposed to come out earlier. I want to say it was supposed to put a little bit more space, like, as it is, there's, you know, Tony Stark dies in three episodes of this show, of this season, and there's not a lot of breathing room between them. I think this might have been supposed to... I, th I think that was what Emergency Awesome said. That there was This was supposed to help put some breathing room between, so it's possible that at least one of the last two will also be a little bit lighter, although, you know, there's been some dark material in every single one of these so far. I guess that is it. And, you know, we don't know if the big team-up is going to be this season or the next season, but, yeah, I am really, really psyched to, to see it. So, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.